Three, two, one. Oh, I hope this goes well. Dear future self, I hope you uh, I hope you nail it, not fail it. So we're off. Hello guys and welcome to today's video. Uh, 1.8 is coming out soon. The first pre-release came out just a couple days ago, depending on when you're watching this. And maybe you're like, hey, I have no idea what's going on. What's coming up? What am I waiting for? So I'm here to give you the uh, the um, the overview of the entire update. See what I, if I can fit in these like 10 minutes or so. See what I can tell you. See if I can fit everything in. Sorry if I forget anything. Sorry if I skip anything. Sorry if I get anything wrong, especially. But let's go start. So we've got all these presentations set up. This took me quite a while to make. Uh, we'll start over here with slime blocks. You've probably heard of these. These are revolutionary. They're awesome. They're trampolines, basically. You can uh, you can jump off of them, and they're bouncy and stuff. Bounce. And uh, you can hold shift to stop bouncing. You can also, if you get it back up here, you can hold space bar to only bounce as much as your jump height. And then, like I said, hold shift to stop bouncing. And over here we've got some new blocks, a lot of new blocks in this update. You got diorite, andesite, and granite, all found in the normal world generation, but also craftable with cobblestone and uh, nether quartz for diorite in this uh, pattern. And andesite you make with diorite and cobblestone to get some andesite. And granite is also crafted with uh, diorite. You have to uh, you have to make it with uh, nether quartz though, not not cobblestone. You can polish these blocks, all three of those, by putting 2x2 two two squares in your crafting table or inventory crafting area. You can get the polished versions, they look a lot nicer. You can see, I set up over here a little demonstration so you can see how much nicer they look. The bottom is the polished version, the top is the naturally found, generated in your world version. And might I add right now, before I say anything else, that these spawn before ores, ores will spawn afterwards. So that they will not mess with your ore generation in your world. They will not lessen the ore you will get. So we've got a new mob in uh, in the water around the ocean monuments. These things are called guardians. They are badass little, uh, little little cyclops water dudes who shoot laser beams out of their eyes and kill squids and also players dealing 2.5 hearts of damage in uh, normal mode. So they shoot laser beams and uh, kill squids. I, I love them. They also drop prismarine shards and prismarine crystals, all things that are used to craft the new blocks for underwater and stuff. You can put them in a 2x2 to make, uh, and prismarine, sorry. Uh, they change color. It's creepy. Uh, they go from purple to blue to green to brown. I'm not sure in what order, but right now it's kind of purple, you can tell, and that's a creepy sound. Over here you got prismarine bricks. They're a little smoother and brick-like, not even tileable. I don't understand, but... uh. They are crafted this way, with a 3x3 three three square of um, prismarine shards that you get from those guys again. And then you've got dark prismarine, which looks more uh, more like the bottom of a pool to me. And you got them in a square around a uh, an ink sack in the middle. And so over here, you've got a new light source, a really awesome looking light source with a moving texture, I might add. And they are made with a plus, a cross of prismarine crystals with a uh, surrounding of prismarine shards, all dropped by the little guardians oh, who kill squids with their laser beams that they shoot out of their eyes. So, over here, we've got quite a new uh, quite a new thing that we have to introduce, and uh, it's been in here since the beginning of the game, but it hasn't had a real use. Sponge. Sponge is great. Uh, as soon as you place it in water, it sucks up all the water around it, and I think a 5x5 five five sphere shape. And it'll soak up water and create wet sponge. You can throw wet sponge into a furnace to create dry sponge. Or you can uh, put it onto somewhere. Oops. Um, that was not intentional. And it'll be, uh, it'll start producing uh, water dropping particles. And that's pretty funny too. Another thing that you can do is throw stone bricks into a furnace while we have our furnace out. And that will actually make cracked stone bricks. Before, those were only obtainable through strongholds and naturally generated structures. But now you can get cracked stone bricks in survival by just throwing stone bricks into a furnace. So that's really simple. So uh, these guys will keep making water particles. Like I said, you can throw them in a furnace to make uh, dry sponge, just normal sponge. And uh, that's pretty cool too. 
So uh, there's something new that I, I'm kind of enjoying is that you can take a Silk Touch pickaxe and mine mushrooms. So you have to be in survival, so uh, get in survival here. Let's you can actually mine the mushrooms and get mushroom blocks. So uh, that's awesome. <laughs> they have the same texture on all sides. They're not uh, they're not actually according to this. They uh, they don't follow that. So you don't have like 50 bajillion types of um, types of mushroom blocks in your inventory. I'm pretty sure you can get the stocks too. I don't know, actually, no, I've never tried. But uh, you can now that you can make uh, cracked stone bricks, they also felt like it was necessary to make mossy stone bricks and mossy cobble also. So you can do that with vines placed next to those two blocks in your inventory crafting to make mossy cobble or mossy stone bricks. That's pretty cool. Before, like I said, they're only obtainable through strongholds, dungeons, naturally spawning, things like that. And uh, next thing we have is, uh, is doors. Doors, we've got new doors. We've got the normal wooden door, which is uh, oak wood. And we've got our spruce wood door, which is uh, darker and also vertical lined and, and, and stuff. And then we got a birch door, which has like a little shade over a window or something. We've got a transparent acacia wood door. We've got our Hershey bar, sorry. We've got our dark oak wood door. And we have our jungle wood door, which uh, has a nice little window that you can look out of and see creepers coming in and blowing up your stuff. So, new thing about doors also is that if you take oak wood planks, you can actually make three wooden doors, and they're also stackable. Doors are finally stackable, and they don't take six blocks to make anymore. They take two. So, that's pretty nice. I also want to show you guys that if you now drop a boat from three blocks or higher, Onto a solid block, it'll break into its components, which are, as usual, sticks and planks. I set this little thing up right here to show you guys that, sadly, I know, it kind of sucks. Uh, baked potatoes will now only fill two and a half hunger bars, which is five points. And uh, carrots will only fill one and a half hunger bars as opposed to two, which is only three hunger points. That's kind of lame. I don't know why they did that. I think they just felt like that needed to be uh, lowered a little bit. But, uh, oh well, it's in the game now. Can't do anything about it. So over here, we have coarse dirt. New block added uh, recently. It makes it so grass will never grow on those uh, those dirt blocks. And I, I still don't understand what the point of this is. I'm trying to find a way this would be helpful at all. I, I can't. I really can't. You can also craft this with gravel and dirt in that uh, in that fashion. We have new fences and new fence gates. All the different types of wood have their own now. It's pretty great. But then you're thinking, hey, you've craft uh, fences with sticks. How does that work? How do you make different ones? Well, they also changed the crafting recipe up a little bit too. Now you have to have four blocks uh, lined up like this. It can be all of one wood type, but not different woods like this. With two sticks in the middle, and you get a different type of fence with each kind of wood you use, which is uh, kind of sucky because you got to use four four blocks now instead of you know two and a half, so uh, or three I mean. But now you get three fences out of it instead of two per crafting recipe completed, which is uh, kind of makes up for it in a little bit in a little way, but it's uh, still still a net loss. And uh, you make the fences the same way as you used to, but they accord to the different types of wood you use as. Uh, as they would in this update. So, a little update with villagers. Their breeding system is a little different now, along with their trading. Uh, quote, their trading is more useful. It's just, they have a lot more useful trades, more reasonable. Uh, they give you a lot of stuff that's actually, you know, reasonably priced, <laughs> considering that they are villagers. But now when they spawn, they have two to four trades unlocked already. And once you complete those trades, they will become willing to breed. Now, they also took out that villagers will always be willing to breed. Now you have to trade with them for them to actually be willing to breed. And it only happens on the first time you trade with a specific trade. That's all uh, kind of hard to explain right now, and I'd rather not to save some time. But look it up when you have a chance, because it's really complicated if you're ever into vi villager breeding. It's kind of stupid, and I don't like it, but... uh. We have to deal with it, because it's Minecraft. So, we got a new game mode, which is a pretty big thing. It's a uh, spectator mode, and uh, 
a couple changes that you have to that we have made here. So we've got a spider, and let's spawn a creeper in, and let's go into game mode three. And we're spectator now. We can fly around. We are nearly invisible, or just our heads visible in our little inventory here. Let's left click on any mob to what? To see through its eyes. We can see what the mob sees, and spiders apparently see this. They see crooked versions of everything and straight versions of everything blurred out on everywhere, and you can left shift to get out of that. And uh, creepers see very pixelated versions of everything, and also green. So, uh, yeah, that's that's interesting. But uh, my favorite one by far is the Enderman. Uh, they teleport away pretty fast. They can't really. Uh... Yep, there he goes. There he goes. Where'd he go? There you go. Well, uh, gotta track him down first and get back here. Left click on him, and they see everything in negative, which is kind of kind of interesting because uh, if you see endstone in negative uh, with a negative filter, I mean you actually get cobblestone. Cobblestone is a reversed version of endstone. There's my little one playing over there. But um, it's kind of uh, it's kind of cool how they see everything so different. And uh, here he goes. He's going all the way back. That's great. Left shift to get out of that again. And back in creative. Okay, so next we've got a new passive mob. Uh, you just saw one right there. We've got rabbits. Rabbits are small little creatures who, uh, who jump really really low for some reason but they they have some new drops that are pretty interesting they've got rabbit's foot they've got rabbit tide and raw rabbit which you can cook to make cooked rabbit and um cooked rabbit is used in rabbit stew which is the best food in the game at the moment it is amazing it fills five hunger bars ten hunger points that is the most in the game but then again it takes all this stuff to craft you gotta get a a cooked rabbit Cooked, er, not a cooked carrot, that's not possible. Baked potato, carrot, mushroom, and a bowl. And you end up with one little bowl of mushroom. Not mushroom, god. You got rabbit stew. And, uh... Is it worth it? I don't know, you decide. And it's kind of... It's kind of cost... costly, so... Rabbit's foot is kind of a rare drop from rabbits. You're gonna have to kill a lot to get these rabbit's feet. Um, but it's used in, uh, brewing to make potions of leaping. You get an awkward potion by using a nether wart, and then you get uh, potions of leaping by throwing rabbit's foot in there. You can extend them, you can uh, boost them to potions of leaping too, but uh, if you didn't know, potions of leaping are useful because when you use them, you can jump over fences, finally, and uh, that's pretty cool. There are a couple special types of rabbits. Of course, Minecraft has to add special ones, like they added the Jeb sheep. There's the toast rabbit, which is a tribute to someone's... Uh, Deceased uh, rabbit. If you name an egg toast or name a rabbit toast, its skin will become this one, and it's a unique, unique uh, skin for rabbits. They won't usually spawn like this. And there's also another unique one: the killer bunny. It's, it's a killer bunny. He ha has a one in a thousand uh, chance of spawning. And you can also spawn him in using the slash summon command, like I did. And his name just happens to be the Killer Bunny. He can do up to 12 damage, and that's 6 hearts, when he's in hard mode. And he's dangerous. You don't want to be around him. I don't think anyone else does either. But that's pretty much all you need to know about rabbits. Before we move on, I forgot. Uh, there are now iron trap doors. You can uh, flip them with uh, redstone, but you can't open them with your hands. Just like iron doors work in, uh, in, uh, in 1.7 and stuff. And... So, uh, you can use redstone signals to open and close those, but like I said, you can't use your hands. They're made by 2x2 two two of iron ingots in the, uh, in the crafting section. So now we have a new, uh, another new mob. It's kind of slightly, well, far more lame than, uh, the, uh, the Guardian was. It's called the Endermite. It appears to be like a silverfish without these spines or anything, and it's just... Come on, what do these guys even do? These guys have a 5% chance of spawning whenever you use an ender pearl. You can also spawn when an enderman teleports. Um, other than that, they're pretty useless. At one point, they were hostile towards endermen, and they would attack each other. But uh, they they took that out, and I don't know why. So uh, so they're, they're useless and lame. And they despawn after two minutes. So so congrats. That's, that's useless. All right. New addition to uh, to animal farming 
if you use enough of uh, an animal's corresponding uh, food choice on it, they will uh, they will eventually grow into an adulthood if they are a baby, which is uh, pretty useful, except that it takes just about uh, 5 billion of them to actually make it grow. I'm just holding down the right click right now, and they get particles, and this has probably been a stack so far. There you go. There he's an adult now. You can accelerate their growth like that very slowly, very, very slowly. And uh, that's, at least it's useful. You can uh, make babies adults pretty quickly by that if you have a bunch of uh, their food. Sheep are finally useful now. In 1.8, they finally drop food. They drop mutton, raw mutton, which you can cook into cooked mutton, which fills six hunger points or three hunger bars for them noobs out there. So, on to my favorite feature of 1.8. I can't wait for this. Banners. Banners, banners. They're like signs, except with uh, instead of wood, you use wool. You get that uh, colored banner. There are all the colors of banners. You get uh, all these colors of banners and stuff. And you can use any of those as your base. Now, you can use these with dyes, say, to, uh, to color up the banners. And uh, there are a lot of different um, ways you can do that. You can do stripes. You can do... Uh, Different um, different things with these. You can experiment with those. There's a, wik a wiki page about it, of course. There's about everything on Minecraft. And uh, there are also a couple things that I might go over now, because uh, they're so cool. Wither skeleton skulls, creeper heads, daisies, and god apples, or golden enchanted golden apples, as I think they're called in the game, are all special because they can be made into special banners. So these four ingredients, the wither skeleton skull, the creeper head, the daisy and the uh, and the god apple or super enchanted golden apple, whatever you want to call it, can be used to make special designs on these and also colored. I'll uh, bring that up in a second. But each one brings a different design. The creeper head will bring up this uh, creeper face. That's kind of obvious. The daisy brings up a sun-shaped flower. The uh, wither skeleton skull brings this shape, which is pretty cool. You can make pirate ships with it. That's awesome. And then the God Apple makes a Mojang logo. Of course. Thank you, uh, thank you, team, for uh, for being yourselves. Banners can be placed on the ground like this. They only occupy the lower block. You can actually put something on top of that if you want to. I don't see why you would want to, though. You can actually put even more banners on it too. And they can also be placed on walls and multiple of them. It, it, like I said, I don't see why you'd want to, but they can be. So, on to the last and another really good feature of 1.8 uh, that I'm going to present today, armor stands. Armor stands are awesome. You can put armor on them and they also stand. Okay, that's pretty much it. But you can also put heads on them. You can also put pumpkins. Uh, and display your armor on them. Just right click with the armor in your hand to put them on. Right click to take off the armor. Uh, pretty simple. Another really cool feature is that they can actually be pushed around in, uh, in minecarts. That's that is really awesome. You can use this to make uh, pretty cool storage units for these guys. These, uh, these armor stands can be pretty useful for armor storage. I know in a lot of servers I play, I've got way too much armor left over and I just need somewhere to put it. But uh, now that uh, armor stands exist and will be existing soon in multiplayer, I can use those uh, minecarts to store them real easy. So that's pretty cool. And uh, I don't think I missed much, but I probably did. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed anything really important. I think that's all I, I really know about 1.8. I can't wait for the update to come out. I don't know when it's coming out. It's an unmarked release date. But uh, when it does, uh, hopefully uh, this is all you need to know. And uh, see you guys next time. I hope you enjoyed. hope I didn't leave anything out. Again, I'll say that a lot because it's true. And uh, see you guys next time. Bye. Thing I forgot, number one. You can enchant boots with Death Strider. It'll actually... <laughs> Let you move faster underwater, which is very useful for these um, new uh, new underwater monuments, as they're called. And uh, it can go up to an, a third level enchantment, which is pretty useful for when you're actually running around underwater. Because it's super annoying to do that otherwise. Thing I forgot, number two. Beacons can now be recolored. Their beams of light can uh, be different colors if you throw, show, shine them through stained glass. They can even mix colors, like blue and red can be purple and other, uh, other such colors. And I just made a black at the top, so it would be black all the way up. But um, 
you can uh, do a lot with this. I can't wait for that too. That's also a really cool feature. Thing I forgot, number three. Using a hoe on a coarse dirt block will return it to normal dirt. Okay, really? How did this even happen? This, is, this isn't... This isn't zero zero. This isn't my spawn chunk. This, just how did this happen? I I don't understand. I'm just gonna what?